Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Ballard, President of the Institute for Exploration, and I want to welcome you to Challenge of the Deep. In a few moments, our team is going to take you to a very special place deep beneath the sea that few have ever seen before. It's called Lost City, but it's not the site of ancient ruins. Lost City is an amazing geologic feature recently discovered in the Great Abyss situated on the largest mountain range on Earth, the Mid-Ocean Ridge. The Mid-Ocean Ridge runs around our planet like the seam in a baseball, a boundary where the Earth is creating its outer skin as its great crustal plates move away from one another. More specifically, Lost City is located on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge in a small valley called the Atlantis Fracture Zone, a miniature version of the San Andreas Fault that exposes a steep vertical wall of the Earth's interior. Now sit back and enjoy your journey to Lost City. As we stare into the stars above us, we ask ourselves, does life exist elsewhere in the universe, or are we alone in the cosmos? Ironically, the answer to this question may lie deep beneath the sea, at places like Lost City. Similar to outer space, life at Lost City lives at the extremes. To explore this world of extreme depths, high pressures, harsh temperatures, and total darkness requires the latest in advanced undersea technology. Lost City lies at the base of a large vertical scarp that we must first descend, its mountain climbing done backwards. Lost City lies in a world of total darkness where the warmth and life-sustaining energy of the sun never reaches. Photosynthesis cannot take place. Plants cannot grow here. Early underwater explorers first thought no life could exist in the deep sea, but it does as we see this wreckfish swim by. Fish are found at all depths of the sea, but not as plentiful in the sunlit upper layers. The lights of Hercules can blind them as they swim by. The creatures that live here look very much like plants, but they're not. They're really animals that are dependent upon life from the sunlit layers. That life that dies and then falls into the deep for them to eat. Deep sea corals attach themselves to the hard rock surface. As we stop momentarily to explore them, a large deep sea shark passes between Hercules and our support vehicle Argus, its lights glowing in the distance. Many of the life forms we encountered were never seen before. So to better understand their origins, we pick them up with our mechanical arm and then place them inside one of the vehicle's many compartments. Sampling these corals is not easy, as Hercules must hover on the side of a sheer vertical rock face as it collects the coral, holding it up to our high-definition cameras so that we can get a better view. The corals come in many colors, standing out against the brown rock outcrops on which they are attached. Many provide homes for other creatures that live amongst their fragile branches. One of my favorite encounters during our descent to Lost City was a small red crab. 
carefully walking upside down across a soft pink coral. Another was a duel between Hercules and a white-tipped red crab. The crab lost, but Hercules took great care not to crush it in its powerful hand. It escaped our clutches momentarily before Hercules could tuck it inside the sample box and close the door. Just before reaching Lost City, we had a final encounter with a mother crab perched on a cliff face, cradling a smaller crab in its protective arms. But at last, the tall white spires of Lost City come into view. As tall as city buildings, they look like giant stalagmites in the dark reaches of Carlsbad Cavern. But instead of being stalagmites formed by dripping water, the limestone spires of Lost City are caused by warm water coming out of the bottom, flowing upward as it builds the spires. The spires of Lost City are formed by a process called serpentinization, a process that takes place deep within the earth when seawater traveling down cracks in the crust come in contact with the rock uplifted from the mantle, a rock called peridotite. The chemistry of the seawater is dramatically changed by its interaction with the mantle, leaching out the calcium carbonate needed to form the spires. The reaction is also like making concrete. It generates heat, which warms the altered water that now flows back to the surface of the ocean floor. But how can you have warm water in the cold abyss of the deep sea? Is it caused by an underlying magma chamber, like those that create hot black smokers on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge? The answer is no. Black smokers are black, but these spires are white. The only way to understand the complex origin of Lost City is to take samples. At first, we use Hercules suction tube to literally vacuum the spires. Then we bring its dexterous hand into play. Each sample is held up to the camera for close-up inspection. We also need to take samples of the warm water that is flowing out of the spires, and this is much more difficult to do. The limestone rock spires are growing before our very eyes and still remain soft, having not hardened into solid rock. They are only a few moments old, surrounded by shimmering warm water from which they came. The most dramatic feature of all is the upside down pools of hot water that are trapped beneath the very ledges they are forming. The warm vents of Lost City, which have the pH of 11, similar to that of Drano used to clean your clogged pipes in your kitchen, also support bacteria capable of living in extreme environments through a process known as chemosynthesis. Our studies of life living in the extreme environments of inner space are helping scientists in outer space in their continuing quest to find life not only in other regions of the universe, but within our own solar system.